Hi, I'm Laura Staples with virtualsheetmusic.com and one of Virtual Sheet Music's members asked for a little help with vibrato. And so this video is going to give some tips and some troubleshooting help on vibrato. I could never teach vibrato from beginning to end in one lesson or in one video. In fact, I've created a whole course just on vibrato and it's several hours long. So, vibrato. Most of us know what it is. It's that coveted, beautiful motion of the hand that makes violin and stringed instruments sound so expressive. Vibrato can be fast, slow, wide, narrow. It can be a wrist vibrato, it can be an arm vibrato. Let me demonstrate just a few different kinds of vibrato. Here's my normal vibrato. Um, a really narrow vibrato is, is effective in very fast, exciting, passionate passages. Or a slower, wider vibrato for slower, more expressive passages. I mean, it's all expressive. It just evokes just a slightly different nuance to do a slow vibrato versus an energetic vibrato. Um, I mentioned a wrist vibrato versus an arm vibrato. Um, I like to start teaching my students a wrist vibrato because it's much harder to learn. And then we can add a little bit of arm and it comes very easily and a lot of people end up with a combination vibrato. Many, many professional players, they use some kind of a combination. There's a finger vibrato which you can use in way up in the upper positions where you don't really have the freedom of the wrist or the arm. So you use just a little motion of the finger. Okay, so the best way to start learning vibrato, I think, is to learn it up here with the hand against the ribs and just take one finger at a time and work on rolling the finger while the hand gets to be trapped on the ribs. That really helps to isolate where the vibrato needs to come from for a wrist vibrato. The rule with vibrato, and this is very important for you to understand, is that you start from your note, from the pitch, and you roll below the pitch, and then back to the pitch. Vibrato will never have you going above the pitch, ever. Okay, so it's very important that you start on the note and then roll back. A vibrato in slow motion would look like this. Now, of course, as we go faster, we don't vibrate quite that widely, but you see that this knuckle here flattens out. But what's going on when we vibrato is the finger is extremely relaxed. It's just this loose piece of spaghetti. And the only thing that's held fast is the fingertip on, on the note. Okay, so you'd start up here, <clears throat> Pick a pitch, we'll just call it pitch X because the note isn't important at this, at this moment. And just do some slow, wide oscillations to make sure they're even and circular, okay? And then just work on speeding them up. I'm doing two per bow, one, two, one, two, then I might do three, two, three, one, two, three, and then four, and so on. And you do it with all four fingers on all four strings because each string is slightly different. Okay, when you get good at doing that and you're up to a full vibrato speed, something that sounds kind of natural, then it's time to move down to first position. And that takes a little transition period and 
You can do that several ways. Some people put sponges or even their own hand to help them to learn how to move just their wrist in first position without the training wheels. Then you remove the crutch and add your bow and try to work on that. Same way, <clears throat> one finger at a time. Just do two nice slow oscillations per bow, then do three, then do four. You can do it with a metronome. You could put the metronome on 60, do two oscillations per click, and then three, and then four. Um, a real key in vibrato is to do long bows. If you're constantly changing your bow, your vibrato is going to want to start and stop with your bow. So train your bow to do big long whole notes so that you can get this feeling of a real sustained note. One other tool to help you to transition from here to first position is you can put a piece of tape, just a nice clear piece of scotch tape, on your fingertip and then put your finger on the pitch that you plan to play. We'll say we're going to play B on the A string. And then you pretend like there's a smudge below that note. Okay, and so you're going to wipe that smudge off. And you'll find this is really easy to get that wrist motion that you need. You won't do any of the weird stuff that normally happens when we're trying to play an actual vibrato note. The tape is not necessary, it just makes it slide easier, especially if you have sweaty hands. Okay, and then once you get good at that with all four fingers, then you can start trapping the fingertip and learning to just rock it like a rocking chair. Okay, and the, the trick is to hold firmly enough that your finger doesn't slide but not firmly enough that you get tense. Okay, now some common problems with vibrato, especially down in first position, is the wrist wants to do these weird things. <laughs> so watch in a mirror and watch that your wrist isn't bending out. There's no need for the wrist to bend out. You want it to just bend kind of like you're knocking on a door. Knock, knock, knock. Okay, another common problem is the scroll shakes out of control. I'm sure you've seen that. And that's caused by a vibrato that's out of alignment. You know, when we put our fingers on the string, our fingernails, they don't point straight to the left and they don't point straight to our face. They point kind of over our shoulder in a little bit of an angle. and. Our strings, on the other hand, point right towards our face. And so there's a little juxtaposition between our fingers and our strings. And you have to learn to have your fingers on an angle, but teach them to roll straight up and down the string, not in some sideways fashion. Okay, another thing that causes that scroll to shake is gripping with the left hand too much or not having freedom in the web of the hand. You might be gripping with the web of the hand. You need to get some space in there. I know there's different ways of holding the violin with the left hand, but it's, it's inevitably caused by tension or by a misunderstanding of how we're aligned on the violin. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.